So one piece of equipment that I completely neglected to upgrade in my YouTube setup is my tripod. I figured all a tripod is, is just three legs that come together at a point, and then at that point is where you can attach a camera. And so while yes, all tripods do just hold camera steady, I didn't quite realize the benefits you can actually get for investing in a good tripod. I have recently just upgraded from a tripod that cost me $24 last year to one that is originally $100, and now after using this for the past month, I can't believe I waited this long to finally upgrade my tripod in my setup. So in this video, I'm gonna run through five reasons why I think every YouTuber should invest in a quality budget tripod. So let's get right into that. Yo, what's going on everyone Nathan here so before I get into the five differences between cheap and decent tripods I want to quickly run through each of the tripods that I'll be comparing in this video and so the first one I'm gonna be talking about is the UB size CT 50 this tripod has a minimum height of 17 inches when it's collapsed and a maximum height of 50 inches when fully extended the legs each have two separate sections which are held in place by quick release locks and the head of this tripod also extends for additional height with the screw clamp. The head of this tripod has a three-way pan which can rotate vertically, horizontally, and laterally. And there is also a bubble level which is really only useful to level to the horizon and useless if you shoot in vertical video format. This tripod has a maximum payload or weight it can support of 4.41 pounds or 2 kilograms. This specific tripod also comes with a spring-loaded phone mount with a quarter inch screw on the bottom so you can easily connect this to the tripod and I would say this tripod's more suited towards phones rather than DSLR or mirrorless cameras. So I have used this tripod for the better part of a whole entire year now ever since I started my YouTube channel and I would say it's decent and good enough for any sort of beginner YouTuber out there or filmmaker but where this thing really starts to show its price and its build quality is when you start getting into like more dynamic shots and you want to start leveling up your video production, take smoother shots, that's where this thing really starts to lack. So now moving over to my new tripod and actually this is the one that I'm using to mount my camera to to film this video. But this tripod is the Gigoto AT24 Pro Dreamer tripod. This tripod is originally $100 on Amazon but is now currently on sale for $90. And I actually was able to pick this up for Prime Day, so I got it for around $65. So I really did save a lot of money with this tripod, and it is great for the price. This tripod is made out of aluminum and has a minimum height of 18.8 .8 inches when closed and a max height of 77.55 inches when fully extended. This tripod weighs 3.37 pounds or 1.53 kilograms and has a maximum payload of 17.6 pounds or eight kilograms. The legs on this tripod each have four section adjustable columns with quick release locks, and the head is a 360 degree panorama mount with a ball joint. There is also a bubble level on this head, which is a circle and a dot, so this can be used to help level in two dimensions. So those were quick overviews of the two tripods that I own, and so now I wanna get into those five differences between cheap and good quality tripods, and to see if it's worth that extra $75 that you'll be paying if you invest in a good one. So the first and probably most notable difference that you'll realize between a cheap and a good tripod is the build quality of it. The Geek Oto is made out of much sturdier and better put together metal pieces and makes the whole thing feel more sturdy while using it. There have been a few times where I've accidentally hit or bumped my UB sized tripod with my camera attached to it and because the build quality is so much worse, it almost starts to tip over every single time with little force applied to it. I feel much more comfortable using the Geek Goto as it can take harder nudges without wanting to tip over. And so one last note on the build quality is that like you'll hear like this is definitely very cheap material. Like it rattles around so much and especially when you have like a heavier camera on it, it's very unstable and easily like kind of gets out of place. So that's also like another thing that you're paying for with the more money is just a much sturdier tripod in general. So another area where the build quality really shines through is with adjusting the heads. On the Geek Oto, all the dials lock extremely tight and have a limit as to how much they can loosen. With the UB size, once you loosen the screws enough, they actually fall out and I've already lost some a few times. Luckily, I found them at like the bottom of my bag, but and so that's another thing that I really like about the Geek Oto is that the adjusters stay there. They don't fully fall out unlike the UB size, so you don't have to worry about them just 
loosely ending up in your bag somewhere. And then lastly, with the build quality is the payload that each tripod will be able to hold. So I know that the Geek Oto weighs about four times as much as the UB size, but with that increased weight, it can hold a payload of four times as much. And that really shows through, especially when you start moving away from the phone and getting into DSLR and mirrorless cameras. Like it is way more sturdy. I feel way more comfortable putting my expensive camera setup on the Geek Oto instead of the UB size. And so with that, that's another thing. You kind of want to invest in a tripod that will help you protect your more expensive gear, your lenses, your cameras. So keep that in mind. Build quality is a huge difference between these two. So the second big difference that you'll realize between these two tripods is how much smoother the panning capabilities on the Geek Oto is versus the UB size. So I'll put it out there right now, the Geek Oto does not have a fluid head, which those are usually much more expensive and just a completely different mounting system than what the Geek Oto has. But even without a fluid head, the 360 degree panning head on the Geek Oto really does feel like it is greased and it really just helps you keep those buttery smooth pans as you go across and really just helps you keep the same velocity as you're panning through your shot. For me to get the best shots with the UB size, I would need to loosen all of the joints to the points where the screws are almost falling out and even then so, there will still be friction as I pan through and the pans just never look buttery smooth like with the Geek Oto. The exponentially smoother pans that I can get with the Geek Oto honestly make the price difference between these two tripods almost completely worth it just on this one point alone. So now the third big difference between cheap and good tripods is you'll find that the better ones have faster and more adjustability options than the cheaper ones do. The first place where you'll really notice this is on the ball joint with the Geek Oto. This ball joint allows for almost an infinite amount of angle adjustments to your camera and it's super quick and easy just to turn the knob, adjust it, turn it back, and then it's set in place. With the UB size, you'd have to adjust each axis separately. And even then so, some of the axes have like teeth for their joints. And so there's not an infinite amount of positions you can put it in, just each like setting of the teeth. And then if you have a heavier camera, the teeth aren't that strong. And then they start to like fall, even when you have it set and as tight as you can put it. So there's just some of the different like adjustability things that I can name off just the top of my head right now between a cheap and a quality tripod. So the fourth difference is that generally the better tripods have a longer extending range and so therefore they're bigger and that means that they're going to be less portable than the cheaper ones. So for this reason it really all comes down to you finding the best compromise that you need your tripod to do. If you're looking to take it with you on the go for like different panoramic or landscape shots out in the wilderness then you definitely want something smaller and more compact that doesn't weigh too much but if you're looking for just something that's really high quality professional and you just plan on leaving it at home in your studio, then you can definitely go for and opt for a more expensive and heavier one. Generally with higher quality tripods, you can expect a higher range of different heights that it can reach. So the Geek Oto at its max height is almost 30 inches taller than the UB size. And when it's fully compact down, it's only two inches taller. So you get that really wide range of different heights that you can use for different things and it also be just as portable as the UB size. So you can definitely expect that with higher quality tripods when you invest in them. And so the fifth difference that you'll notice between a good quality tripod and a cheap one are just the extra like little features that you'll get in a more expensive and high quality tripod. For example, with the Geek Oto, there is a quick release plate to easily remove your camera whenever you need to, unlike the UB size, which is just a little screw that's really annoying to take in and out. There is also a cutout to easily align and set up vertical video shots, which becomes increasingly more important as each year comes out. And especially in 2022, where vertical video seems to be taking over every sort of social media, this is a huge bonus to have. While the UB size does not have like this vertical feature, and it's not as easy to set up with its three different independently active joints. The Geek Oto also has degree marks on the panning joint to help make exact movements from start to finish. It can also be turned into a monopod, which the company advertises as like a hiking tool, which I can definitely see it being used as like a hiking stick with you but I also don't really see me using it that much as like an actual like, you know, tripod or monopod for my camera as I don't think it'll be as steady, but if you want it, it gives it that little extra height that you might need. But I do definitely think that this is cool because I could see a lot of people taking this tripod out with them on hikes to get different like 
nature like landscape wide angle shots with that and so having like a little monopod hiking stick could definitely be a cool little feature that you might have not thought about or even been offered with the UB size. So all the features that I just went over are like extra features that you get and not even considering the build quality or anything else that I mentioned earlier on in the video. So those are the five differences between good quality and cheap tripods. And I really hope I was able to help you realize where that money difference comes from with these tripods because I didn't realize it myself until I got a better one. The time that I'm spending on making each video now has definitely gone down just because how much easier it is to set up my new tripod versus my old one. And the list just goes on and on with how beneficial it is. So this is why I definitely recommend any sort of YouTuber out there to actually invest in a decent tripod because it'll pay off in dividends later on. Both tripods will be linked down below in case you're interested in either of them. I highly recommend the Geek Goto. <laughs> I think that's a great tripod. So that's gonna be it for the video. If you enjoyed it or if you learned something new, then please don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe. And with that being said, have a great day, everyone.